Welcome back to CCNA1. We're going to talk about some network security fundamentals. So in this video, we're going to talk about security threats and vulnerabilities, what those mean, why they're important. Next, we're going to talk about network attacks, different vulnerabilities. We're going to talk about different ways to mitigate some of these attacks. And then we're going to talk about device security. We're going to talk about device hardening and what that means in the fourth section. So really, we have four different types of threats that we're worried about. We have information theft, which is closely tied to this identity theft. So maybe this could be your personal information. So maybe HR documents could have like your social security number, your name, your birthday, all that stuff tied together, which can go to identity theft. It may also be proprietary information, um, intellectual property, IP as it's called, not uh, not internet protocol, but intellectual property. This can be very, very valuable. Companies like Intel or even Cisco, very, very important that they, um, they protect their intellectual property. We may have data loss or manipulation. So you may have heard of ransomware. Very, very important that we look out for this data loss, right? We could lose our data. A lot of data is very valuable to our organizations. Also disruption of service. This could mean dollars, right? We have employees that aren't working. We have hours that are wasted. We have opportunities that are missed because of this disruption of service. In some cases, if you're in public safety, it may mean lives. It may mean people dying. Um, if, you're, if you're doing work that involves EMS or, or other emergency services, it could really, really be serious consequences. So a vulnerability is really just a type of weakness. So pretty much there's weaknesses in everything, even security devices. Typically, the endpoints are under attack, such as servers and desktops. But there's three different types of weaknesses. There are technological vulnerabilities. Usually, um, they're maybe within a protocol um, recently, there was a WPA2 vulnerability um, that was very dangerous. It was in the protocol. Um, it was mitigated, but um, that was that was scary because everybody uses WPA2 pretty much for their Wi-Fi, um, and it affected yes, it affected enterprise and uh, personal like you would have at home. There's also operating system weaknesses. So like, you know, Windows 10 has a vulnerability, it seems every day. And also network equipment weaknesses, right? Our network equipment is not vulnerable to, um, to these vulnerabilities. Configuration vulnerabilities might include stuff like an unsecured user account, a easily guessed password, a unsecure default password or setting, maybe misconfigured services, misconfigured network equipment, right? So we could misconfigure something and make it vulnerable to attack. Um, this is very, very important that we have smart people that know what they're doing configuring our, our devices. Hopefully, um, you will be smart and know what you need to configure and what you don't. Um, but I digress. So security policy vulnerabilities as well, right? And I would include um, education in this. We need to educate our users and tell them, hey, you know, don't click on silly links and stuff like that. So we need stuff like a written security policy. We need um, authentication continually, right? We can't just let someone authenticate once and then have access to everything. We need to have access controls. So, you know, why does someone in accounting have access to a file share for HR? Software and hardware installation and changes not following policy. So if if there is someone not following policy and doing things outside of our policy, that's very dangerous because one, it's not consistent. And two, it if it violates security policy, it could be putting the whole organization at risk. And also we really, really need a disaster recovery plan. Not having one is is just asking for trouble. Always have a disaster recovery plan. Right, always have backups upon backups upon backups. Never put all your eggs in one basket. So really, all three of these can can create havoc in our network, 
Um, so we want to be able to avoid as many as possible. Physical security. So if something is physically compromised, such as, you know, there's some kind of physical damage to the equipment, it might, um, I mean, obviously it'll, it'll break. And then when, when that happens, you know, what's going to happen to our users? What kind of impact is it going to have? Is it, is it like I said earlier, is it going to be dollars? Is it going to be lives? Um, so we want to be able to mitigate stuff like physical damage to service router switches, cabling, and workstations. So we want to have, you know, a lock on the door so people can't just walk in and, and grab a hammer and, and smash all of our stuff. Um, we don't want environmental threats. So um, we don't want water pipes running over our, our IDFs. If those pipes bust and all of a sudden there's water in our IDF and um, we lose all network connectivity. Also, temperatures, um, humidity even, can damage our networking equipment. So we want to make sure that we are able to monitor and change our temperatures and humidity um, based on our needs for for our IDFs and MDFs. Also electrical threats. So we can mitigate most of these with the UPS. You know, voltage spikes, insufficient supply of voltage, unconditional power or unconditioned power and total power loss. These things can usually be mitigated by UPS. Total power loss, if it's extended amount of time, we can do, you can use a generator, right? But kind of back to the previous slide, we need a DR plan, right? What happens if we lose power? Do we have a generator? Should we buy one? Those are questions you should ask. Maintenance threats. So maybe poor handling of key components. We could have a, a discharge of a, a static electricity. There could be a lack of critical spare parts. So um, having spare parts on the shelf is one of my very favorite things to do. Um, poor cabling, poor labeling, right? We need to keep track of our stuff. We need to be familiar with it and we need to have good documentation. So we need a good plan for physical security, it's very important. So with that, that's all we have in 16.1. In 16.2, it's gonna get really interesting. We're gonna talk about network attacks. I'll see you there.